Hey fans and subscribers, this is your host Joe on the Gaming for Insight channel with you to bring a video on flashing Android 13 on your Retroid Pocket Mini. This video does not serve as a recommendation to do so, as I still want to test it for myself. I have put together this video as an overview of my guide that I have published on my website. Okay, so with the introduction out of the way, let's talk about flashing this device with Android 13 and how to approach it. Okay, so you need some items for this flashing process before you get started. You of course need your mini and the USB cable that comes with it. I recommend using the USB cable provided with the mini as I cannot speak for whether others will work for you. You need the essential Android 13 files for the flashing. You can find that link in the video description or my online guide. You need to install 7-Zip as well, as that is going to allow for us to extract the compressed files that we need to do so for flashing. I used Windows 11 Pro for this process, and it was very streamlined, so I recommend the same. Lastly, make sure you back up what you need, including emulators, BIOS files, and more, whether onto your micro SD or another external media storage device. The flashing of Android 13 will clear all that you have installed and set up on your MIDI. Once the flashing process has completed, you will begin working with a fresh image or install of Android 13. Once you have your device of choice on and ready to start, I recommend installing 7-Zip as that is going to help you extract the files or folders needed. Once you do that, then you are ready to go to the second part, which is to download the essential Android 13 files from the link I share that was provided on X by Retroid. The downloaded files are going to be two compressed folders files, one starting with RP Mini Android and the other starting with RP Mini A13. The names might look slightly different for you than what I am showing. Okay, so now we get to the heavier side of things, which is part three. We need to extract the files folders downloaded from part two using 7-Zip. Next, we need to install the Qualcomm device driver, and that application starts with Qualcomm HS USB. Next, we need to extract another compressed file folder, and this one starts with qpst.win.2.7. Make sure that you are working within the extracted RP Mini Android 13 folder at this point and locating this qpst folder to extract. Four files are going to emerge from extracting that QPST folder. One of them starts with QPST.2.7. This install part has some steps in it. I cover this more in my online guide, so if you get stuck for any reason, do check out those details there in part 3D. You next need to confirm that you have a certain file. It is an ELF file. It is located in the extracted location that starts with rpmini underscore a13. The essential file is titled prog underscore firehose underscore ddr. We need to go to the start menu if you are using Windows 11 Pro and locate the QFIL application. This is the application used to actually prepare for the flashing of Android 13 to commence and execute on the mini. A simple search on the start menu for QFIL will do. Open that application and let's get started with the prep. When we have the application up, access the configuration option in the upper part of the window. We need to change the device type to UFC from EMMC. Very important there. We are done with this menu. This next step is essential though. At the original QFIL application window, we want to select the build type flat build. Okay, moving right along, we need to select the programmer path we want to use. This step can be a bit tricky, so don't hesitate to go to part 4C of my guide. Select browse as we need to specify the programmer path in the file directory. Return to where you extracted your essential files. Open the extracted folder that starts with RP Mini A13. You will see the ELF file we checked earlier to make sure we had. Select it. You will return to the QFIL main window. You will notice that the programmer path is specified now with a file path corresponding to that ELF file. Also, select flat build and search path has a directory path now specified within the folder location for the folder involved having RP Mini A13. Okay. 
We need to next load the necessary XML files, and there are 12 of these. Importantly, you will need to load them in two separate parts. This can be tricky, so do check part 4D of my online guide. Access load XML on the QFIL main window, and once that file directory window comes up, like when we were selecting the port just a moment ago, you are going to want to select XML files. The only files that are going to show are raw program XML files. So select all of those, but don't turn away just yet because you need to select additional XML files that have a different name this time. The second XML files are patch XML files. Select all of those. If you are ready to continue, then remove the micro SD card from your mini as a precautionary measure. Next, we need to prepare the mini for a factory reset. Hold down the volume minus, volume plus, and power button simultaneously for five seconds. Okay, now we get closer to the exciting part. Let's get our USB cable connected to the mini and the device we prepared the flash on using the QFIL application. Now we can return to our device of choice that we set up the flash for in the QFIL application. We need to select the port though. Once you select that, a new window will emerge and you will have the option to select a port having Qualcomm HS USB in it. Click OK on that option selected and return to the QFIL main window. Your text should have changed from please select an existing port to the left of the button we pressed. If it didn't, then you need to try again. Okay, now the fun part you have been waiting for. Now you can select the download button. The flash will then commence. This process was between five and six minutes for me, so do be patient. Importantly, the mini displayed no image on the display during this process for me. You can confirm that the flash succeeded by looking at the status details at the very end of them if you downward scroll. Remove the USB cord and you are going to want to power on the device. You may need to hold down the power button twice for over 10 seconds to do so. Try holding down power twice if needed, no longer than 20 seconds each time. One note for the initial setup process with Android 13, the prompt to calibrate the joysticks emerged for me during the internet setup. Do look for that. If you don't do it correctly the first time, then no worries, as you can return to the settings after completing initial setup to do it again. Complete the initial setup and you can go to settings from the Android home screen if you are using the ASOP launcher, that is, about handheld console and navigate down to see the Android version. If all is done correctly, then you will see 13 to confirm Android 13. Okay, well that is going to wrap it up for this guide. So what do you think? Are you excited for Android 13 on the mini? Feel welcome to let me know in the comments. Also, if you have any questions about my online guide, do leave me a comment below as well within this video. I look forward to reading your thoughts and if you are interested in me making a video of my experience with Android 13 on the mini itself.